Hey y'all, Michelle Raza here with the Finding Yourself Book Club. Today we're going to talk about John Gottman's What Makes Love Last. Um, please do like and subscribe if you haven't had a chance. It really does help us little YouTubers. And check out our website. We're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. There you can fill out our free life balance questionnaire and send it our way. You can also just fill out a contact form and we'll be in touch. The first consult is always free. So we've been talking about John Gottman's... Um, learning to trust again and talking about the really severe health effects of being lonely um it, it's it's really something i mean it, it's um yeah I, I don't know i'm i'm kind of at a loss for words which is not like me but just the physical effects of being lonely are just so bad for you um so if you've watched the previous videos i think i said it in those as well but if you're if you're lonely and you're not really ready to be in a relationship again um, do volunteer. If you can't stand volunteering around people, volunteer at an animal shelter just to kind of get yourself out there. Um, and then you need a best friend. And, and if you really don't know how to, to make friends because it's difficult and you're no longer in school, um, pick up books on emotional intelligence, workbooks, um, regular books. John Gottman's The Seven Principles of Making Marriage Work actually lays out word for word what to say and what not to say. Um, I did cover a few of those in the stress reducing conversation section on this on this playlist. Um, and if you need to, um, if you have health insurance, call a therapist, uh, give us a call. We can help you too. And the first consult, of course, is always free. So, okay, without further ado, lots of blabbing. Let me get on with it. Okay, <clears throat> I'm just going to cover a little bit of what I covered in the previous uh, reading, just to give you some context. Based on my exhaustive research on trust and betrayal, I believe there are five detectable criteria for separating the trustworthy from the shysters. If you meet someone who possesses the following qualities, I think it's worth the risk to open yourself up, perhaps little by little. There is no guarantee. But if you learn to assess others with fairness and objectivity, in time, you are likely to encounter someone with whom you can connect in a deep and loving way. The opposite is also true. If someone fails any part of the following smell test, walk away. 1. Honesty. Do not trust someone who lies to you. Too often, we come up with excuses for the other person. It was a misunderstanding. She had her reasons. It wasn't that bad. It was only one time. Take a clear-eyed look. Has this potential lover ever deceived you? Have you witnessed him or her lying to others? Do you find yourself questioning the veracity of what he or she says and then talking yourself out of your doubts? If so, move on. 2. Transparency a partner's life should be an open book without secrets. Make sure this new person invites you to meet friends, family, colleagues, and also confides in you about major stresses, ambitions, goals. When you ask, where have you been? He or she should answer without hesitation. Three, accountability. Is there proof that this potential partner keeps promises? Are you able to check the details of any significant transactions with others, financial or otherwise? Do not trust someone who remains vague or unreachable about these issues. It's best to be suspicious of people who say, just trust me, in response to a specific question. Trustworthy people don't feel the need to tell you what to think. Four, ethical actions. Does this person display just and fair conduct with consistency? Does he or she express and demonstrate values in tune with your own? If you're not comfortable with someone's morals, do not continue this relationship. 5. Proof of Alliance Any potential mate should demonstrate being on your side and having your back, even in small ways. You want evidence that he or she does not operate out of sheer self-interest nor form coalitions against you. You want proof that he or she takes your interest to heart. 
It is a wonderful sign if someone demonstrates selflessness, selflessness toward you. If you subject, subject the people you meet to this clear-eyed assessment, you will gain confidence in your ability to size up others. I'm not suggesting that becoming more discerning is effortless, but I am certain that learning to trust again is worth it. So <clears throat> I think this is good. These five, five steps are good. I would say um, if you can, go back and review the, uh, the sections on 10 other ways to betray your lover. Um, even if this is not a lover, right? It's someone that you're just thinking about maybe being with, but review that because if they display any of those items when you're just talking, then they're going to do it when you're dating. And so, and there's, there's ways to betray your partner that have nothing to do with sleeping with anyone else. Um, so review those videos. There's 10 videos on the 10 ways. Um, and then there's the first video, which covers, I think the, you know, the, the top level, the covering all 10 of them. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a bit sad because next time we talk about this, we'll be moving on to chapter 14. Um, actually it's the last chapter and I, and I think it's mostly a quiz. So there's not really much that, that we can talk about. So I think we may be done. I think we may be done. I'm kind of sad. <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> I'm actually sad. Okay. Well, I will talk about this now since there's not enough material to do another video. Um, Okay, 14. What is true love? Often, interviewers ask me to define love and to impart a few words of wisdom gleaned from my studies. Yet the best advice I can offer any couple isn't about the science of making successful repair attempts and avoiding the Roach Motel. It is to revere each other and be grateful that you are in each other's life. I know that exposing your relationship to the unyielding light of science can be intimidating. So I hope many of you find reassurance in the book's last quiz below. Consider it a final check on the state of your union. It's a long questionnaire, but like love itself, well worth the effort. You may discover that despite setbacks, troubles, or grievances, you share a solid trust that keeps your love strong. And if not, I hope you've gained a deeper understanding of trust's fundamental role in happiness and a map for finding more of it in your life. And so then the quiz is called, Is This the Real Thing? And I recommend that you pick up the book and take the quiz. And he says, <clears throat> I hope that the research and advice in these pages have illuminated for you what it takes to create a relationship that is mutually satisfying and adds profound meaning to your life. The first step toward nurturing true love is to recognize what it looks like with all of its imperfections and complications. The second is to honor it. Over the years, I have seen too many people turn away from their partner and toss out a good relationship. I have come to believe that the greatest obstacle to love may be a sense of entitlement that leads people to exit a marriage because they deserve the perfect one. It's got to be out there somewhere, right? To be blunt, it is not. No long-term love affair can be a photocopy of an, of an idealized one, whether our image of perfection is our parents' marriage, a celebrity's, or one that we conjure. Consider it excellent news that someone else's love story is never going to be yours. True love is woven out of honoring and understanding each other's unique gifts, vulnerabilities, and eccentricities. Your journey is not going to be like any other couple's, and that's how it should be. Being in love isn't static. It deepens over time. Louise Erdick wrote in her novel, Shadow Tag, Why can't I recover the feelings I had at the beginning? Infatuation, sudden attraction, is partly a fever of surfaces and absence of knowledge. Falling in love is also falling into knowledge. Enduring love comes when we love most of what we learn about the other person and can tolerate the faults they cannot change. A long-term committed relationship will hit bad patches. We're going to have to accept the deretrous of mistakes and regrettable incidents we create. 
but a loving partnership gives us wonderful gifts that make life worth living. A sense of purpose, greater health and wealth, and of course, loving care and nurturance. Learning to cherish another person and allowing that person to cherish you is the greatest blessing of life. Love is the most sacred experience we can have. Remember that you build trust by being there for one another and strengthen loyalty through gratitude, cherishing and honoring what you create together. To paraphrase Proverbs 31, an excellent partner is a jewel more precious than rubies. With a love that you can believe in, you will experience good and not evil all the days of your life. All right, well, um, it makes me sad to finish the book, but here we are, we finished it. If you wanna pick up your own copy, um, I do highly recommend it. The Seven Principles of Making Marriage Work is also a really excellent book by John Gottman. Um, I have noticed like if you're dating and you talk about that work, <laughs> it's a very quick way to get people to run away from you in the dating scene. Um, but he's packaged his knowledge in so many different formats. There's eight dates. Um, his initial research was on raising emotionally intelligent children. So there's a book on that, which I will cover at some point. Um, and the next work, so I, if you guys are following multiple playlists, um, I'm doing Lindsay Gibson's Recovering from Emotionally Immature Parents. We also have our Science Fiction Saturday series on Robert Heinlein's Stranger in a Strange Land. Um, I think the next book, because I've seen it so much in the conversations that I have with people, is going to be Melody Beatty's Codependent No More. Um, that one is really good. It's actually based off um, the 12 steps from Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, all the anonymous groups. Um, so I will cover that one. And yeah, I mean, if you guys have recommendations or comments, questions, you can comment here on these videos. You can also just comment on our website. Um, you don't need to comment only if you want to be a client. You can also just give us your feedback. Um, we're at www.findingyourselfsatx.com. All right, take care, y'all. I'm a little sad. I'm, I'm sad to be finishing this book, but, but I'm sure we'll talk again soon on another topic. All right, take care. Bye.